2021 basketball season is officially underway. Hello and welcome to the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic Live from the KFC Young Center on ESPN3. Yes, it is basketball time indeed. Along with Jeff Greer, I'm Don Russell, and welcome to the Derby City. What were you doing about this time about eight months ago, Jeff? <laughs> I was traveling through this pandemic as it was developing, but gosh, it feels like Christmas morning, Don, doesn't it? And we got basketball all week. Glad to have you along. Game one underway between Prairie View, the Panthers, and they're taking on Little Rock, and this game is underway. That's the starting five for Prairie View. Some new uh, faces in that lineup today. They lost a lot of folks from last year. Absolutely had a great season. Actually, the winningest HBCU program the last two seasons in college basketball worked really hard to sa salvage this program, come back from some struggles, and Byron Smith has been a game changer for Prairie View, and they love to get up and down the floor, Don, and they're going to play with a lot of tempo against a team that equally loves to play with a lot of tempo in Little Rock. And Little Rock has its first offensive possession. and will go to work against a man-to-man -man defense. A lot of returnees for the Trojans. Good ball work. That would have been an easy two, but a foul makes it. An opportunity at line for the big guy now as he'll stand up at his Root Manyang. Root Manyang, the preseason Sunbelt Player of the Year selection. And right on this first possession, we see exactly what Little Rock is known for. They were second in the nation last year in free throw attempts per field goal attempts. That means they draw a ton of fouls and they get to the free throw line. And few guys are better at that than Root Manyang for Little Rock. This is going to be a potentially special season for them. I know we've been talking about this, Don. They've been talking a lot about unfinished business. Right. After last season, they felt like they had a shot to make a run in the tournament. And uh, obviously, like so many other teams, missed out on that opportunity. And a turnover, a little bit of an overpassing there. And, you know, it's got to have a little jitters. Nobody's in the arena. They're all waiting for the Louisville game as you look at the sideline. Two outstanding coaches we'll be talking about as well. Two teams, Sunbelt and SWAC. This is gonna be a good matchup. Absolutely, picked for, uh, finished third in the in the SWAC, Prairie View A&M, and uh, Little Rock has high expectations. They won the regular season title in the Sunbelt last year, and you see Marquise Noel there as well. He is a big time scorer, not just for Little Rock, not just in the Sunbelt, but this dude is a guy who can fill it up from New York He's a little fella, just 5'7". Yeah, he is. But he can fill it up. And they love him. A reaching foul that time. That's the first foul in the game. It'll be out of bounds to the left of the basket for Little Rock. And this is the young man we'll be watching, and he lets it go again. Good offensive rebound and even a better block. How about one more nice try? Pass. Those are, we're seeing all of these different things that Little Rock does well. They're great in blob situations, baseline out of bounds plays. They're excellent on the offensive glass. And look at Marquise Noel, such a playmaker, always looking for a teammate with a dime of a pass. And a great block there by Marich. And he's going to take a shot at the other end, a little bit too strong. There's that offensive rebound back in by the big guy. Root Manyang, 16 double-doubles last year. The guy can get on the glass and fill it up quickly. Long arms, he's got so much length, really difficult to handle under the basket. Well, when somebody calls you a protector, that's a pretty good compliment. If you're a defensive player, a turnover, the open three, a little bit too strong this time from Noel, but he's going to get it right back. Look at the offensive rebounding. How about Little Rock? They're going to be hard to handle in the tournament because they really like to go to the glass. Yeah, this is a team that just loves getting after it on the offensive glass. They shot a really high effective field goal percentage last season. They make a ton of twos and just an excellent team working the glass. There's a good job. It changed the defenses that time, Jeff, but it was recognized nicely that time. 
And Linnell Henry gets the first two points in the game for Prairie View. Linnell Henry, one of the two key guys coming back. Fate Williams, really good on the offensive glass. A nice finish there. Good ball movement again. Too strong off the back of the iron from Stoosley. Another big play there. And another Parkinson. good job inside. He kind of owns it right now, doesn't he? Absolutely. Root Munyang already has five points for Little Rock. And Marquise Noel, man, you can just tell he is raring to go this season. He's been all over Instagram talking about how excited he is. All business at this point. No negativity. Straight away. That's in the bottom of the net. That's from... Jawan Daniels out of Harlem, New York. He's a junior guard for the Panthers. There's that fast pace. Almost another offensive rebound, but a good job. And let's see this time if the Panthers get the numbers. Fall away. And that's going to be a rebound foul underneath. Probably on the Panthers here. Catch your breath, John. What a, what a quick start to this one. There's no hesitation whatsoever. Glad you joined us. Yes, we're playing basketball in the Young Center. Glad you joined us. More to come in just a moment. Little by little. Welcome back to the KFC Young Center. Glad to have you along for the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic along with Jeff Greer. I'm Don Russell. A lot of interesting things they put together here, Coach, as we'll talk about this. This uh, particular classic, the 9, 7, and 4, that's one of several combinations they have in this tournament through the week. Yeah, we're, we're going to see some games that aren't technically part of the tip-off classic, but what a group of teams that they've been able to bring in. They have. Five of them were in Joe Lenardi's preseason bracketology projections, and uh, we can just see already they're raring to go. It was funny, Don, talking to coaches all of last week and early this week, they're all just like, we've had weird practices. We've had two weeks where we couldn't practice. We've been doing mini camps. We've been doing all sorts of stuff. But the biggest thing is they all could not wait to get to the Derby City and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. There you see the particulars on Byron Smith. Really done a great job in his sixth season as the head coach. Eight overall. He actually was there ahead of time. And I think he's found a good home there. Absolutely. Played with... Uh, for Houston, he coached under Clyde Drexler. Actually coached the Harlem Globetrotters for a little while, but he's talked so much about how much they've improved quickly. They had a player, the SWAC Player of the Year, Devontae P uh, Patterson, who has signed an Exhibit 10 contract with the Mavericks just recently, and they just feel like they keep getting better and better players and quality players. They've actually got a couple of guys who they're hoping can get waivers and help them out this season, including former Nebraska standout Cam Mack, who's a point guard. So uh, he's just done a great job of assembling talent with Prairie View. Cox checks into the lineup. That's the first substitution in the game. 9-5, Little Rock with the advantage. Here in the first game of the Wade Houston tip-off class, it's going to be a great nine to ten days around the Derby City. Little high post offense going against a little zone this time and a nice defensive play. And now Prairie View, I think they're beginning to feel it a little bit, Jeff. They're a little bit more confident. They want to be frenetic. They want to play with a lot of pace and tempo and just attack the rim on offense and on defense. They want to pressure people, get in passing lanes, get deflections. And actually done one of the best three-point defenses in the country last season. Only 29% opponents shooting for three last year against Prairie View, and we saw there why they're so good at it. Had another substitution, and boy, you can hold somebody to that kind of percentage on three makes a big, big difference. Absolutely. They just have to be able, as Byron Smith says, they've got to clean the glass, and we've seen it early on here. Root Young especially, but also Nikola Marich Getting on the boards, moving people around, using their long arms makes up for missed shots for Little Rock, and that's going to be a challenge all afternoon for Prairie View a &M. And Prairie View, as you see on that possession, the first part of it, they've been trapping and making it a lot more difficult for things to happen inside. Tried to pick up the block here, but it's going to be a charging call. Fouls on Panthers number 15, Damari Harris. 
His second personal team third. Oh, Marquis Noel. Once this guy has the ball in his hands and he's their chief playmaker for Little Rock, you have to expect that Prairie View is going to be basically helping every possible direction on him because he has expansive range, averaged 18 points a game last year, or 17 points a game, excuse me. He's from New York. He loves to pick and roll handoffs. You see him firing away. Rebound underneath after that miss, but... One of the big shoes of Manyang was on the paint down underneath there. You know, that was a good point you were talking about, Jeff. When now we look at Daryl Walker. He was the first-round draft choice back in 1983. Played in the NBA, coached in the NBA. Actually played for former Louisville great and Hall of Famer Wes Unser. Among others, Keith, or, uh, Phil Jackson, he's been with a lot of folks. Yeah, he's an NBA all-rookie team. He won an NBA title. He's got so much to his name. Coached at almost every level, WNBA, NBA, <laughs> Division Two. The guy's been all over the place, but he's got this Little Rock program feeling like uh, the days of Chris Beard again. Well, and you know you can't make passes like that. They had him double-teamed down low, if you notice there, Jeff. Really the change in the defense for Prairie View. It's had a pretty good effect, hasn't it? Absolutely. Prairie View just so good defensively. Cause all sorts of problems getting into the passing lanes. And Byron Smith talked a lot about Fate Williams, Linnell Henry, and Dwayne Cox as guys who have been really impact defenders for them. And Linnell Henry certainly has a tough assignment today with Root Magna. Having some trouble getting it in. And now a steal. And here come the Panthers on the run out. And making it a nice job. Got away from the block that time. Good basket scored by the Prairie View Trojans that time and avoided the block. Yeah, Jeremiah Gambrella, Western Kentucky transfer. How about that? Getting out in transition. And you're right, Prairie View's really grown into this game after a little bit of a shaky start. And watch what they do. Here's a good example. Gambrell. Coming over, reading the situation, and just gets out in front. Look at Root Banyan getting back. Almost got to it, but Gambrell, <laughs> sensing the big fellow, gets a little kiss and escapes for two. And Prairie View, that's exactly what they want to do. They want their defense to create their offense. And when you can get guys getting steals like that off inbounds and open things up, that's a great way to get points against a Little Rock team that's just so tough to score on in the half court. And you say right there, another deflection. The extension really has, well, kind of got the Trojans on their uh, back on their heels a little bit right now. It's funny, Donna, this, this will make folks here in Louisville laugh, but in talking to Byron Smith, he said towards the end of our conversation, I consider myself a poor man's Rick Pitino. <laughs> I want my teams to be frenetic defensively and well-conditioned, and you're seeing it right now. Well, Rick Pitino's not a poor man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really it's a great point. And these, these coaches, you're going to see outstanding coaches throughout this nine-day period. Just glad to be a part of it, and the Derby City is excited. Of course, the Cardinals will be coming up. This afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern as they'll be taking on Evansville. We got a die nine game. Oh, man. And maybe the first lead. Good rejection that time, though, however. And running it the other way, number three, and that's Palermo. That's where they need to go right there, Jeff. Nikola Maric, the big fella, very skilled inside. They consider him their best offensive big man. And you could see there good hands to slip by his man and get the lay-in. But both of these teams playing with this tempo right now, this is how they want to play. Yep. But the result is going to be some deflections and a lot of chaos at times. And another steal. Guess who? Marquise behind the back. Oh, the shot doesn't go. But a little New York from him there. Marquise Noel. He's a showman. <laughs> you watch this guy play, and he'll pull it from anywhere. He's... Hit game winners from 35 feet, and you can just see how electric he is with the ball at his fingertips. He's, he's really just an excellent playmaker for Little Rock there, and foul preventing us from a highlight reel finish. <laughs> yeah, it was on the way. 
That's for sure. This one rims in and out. Marco Andrich. And Marco Lucic, a 6'7 guard from Belgrade, Serbia, among others. Spot up shooter for Little Rock. They've got a pipeline of kids from Serbia, and they have uh, one, one or two from Bosnia Herzegovina, and that is a product of uh, one of their assistants, Preston Laird, who's done a great job recruiting kids from over there. They love their basketball in that part of the world. And boy, it has really paid off, too. It works well for everyone. Great ball movement this time, and that's how you get a basket. Great movement, and finishing it that time was number 22, Jawan Daniels. Absolutely. Prairie View didn't shoot the three very well last season, but when they are making those shots, Byron Smith says they can really feel confident that they can compete with anyone. A lot of action going on. We got a good one going on in the KFC Young Center in the Way Houston Tip-Off Class. Monster Angus Pick Burger at Hardee's. Feed your happy. Well, the college basketball tip-off continues on the ACC Network and the ESPN app at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a battle of the Bills. Evansville squares off against Louisville as game two of the Wade Houston tip-off classic coming up after this one. Should be a good one there, too. All the folks here in the Ville. Uh, Chris Max has got some injuries to deal with, though, doesn't he? It's going to be interesting to see how things go. People just want to get out there and play, don't they, Jeff? Absolutely, and still like uh, a lot like Little Rock with this unfinished business, Louisville. Yep. Went 24-7 and seven last year. Felt like they had a team that could make a run in the NCAA tournament and missed out on that opportunity, obviously. And you're going to see a lot of new faces for Louisville this year. And big, big opportunity for guys like David Johnson and Samuel Williamson to step into big-time roles with NBA draft prospects in their futures. Of course, Evansville now with a new coach and... They're excited to get in here because I think originally it might have been Southern Illinois. That's right, yeah. So I think they were really happy to get the games. They've been so excited over the years to try to get Kentucky and Louisville and Indiana, anybody in the region right. on the schedule. All the all the schools in this region want to play those teams yeah. for obvious reasons. That's true. So I'm sure they were very happy to find an open spot here and be able to come down and play. 12-12. And a good first half, a shaky beginning from Prairie View A&M. But as you can tell, they really made some adjustments. And this thing is knotted with 11.29 to go in the first. I'm Don Russell along with Jeff Greer, Jeremy No, at the controls of a lot of things today. And glad you joined us. Hope you'll stay with us this afternoon as we mentioned. The Louisville game coming up against Evansville. And all week long, we are going to take off for it. Thanksgiving there you talked about earlier the uh, the great job by Ute Manyang is those particular uh, accolades are pretty strong. Yeah, defensive player of the year <laughs> and great shot canceler, shot challenger. Just makes things so much easier for everybody else when you have someone who can erase possessions behind you. Oh, a tough shot. One off the top of the glass nearly and a steal. Could be a four-point opportunity, and Prairie View is smoking right now. Prairie View absolutely has risen to the occasion. They've made four of their last four. They're getting steals now, and they're so dangerous when they can get free points like that. Little Rock has to be a little bit more careful on these inbounds plays. It's going to be full-court pressure all game. Prairie View is going to throw that at you. And you could tell Coach wasn't happy. There's no starters, I don't think, on the floor right now. He said, let's see if somebody else will play. And right now, Prairie View is trying to put and keep the foot on the pedal. Just watch the good ball movement against a pretty sticky man-to-man -man defense here. Shot clock down to six. Good defensive play and picked up by the Trojans. Andrick comes up with it deep in the corner. This three ball in the bottom of the sack. 
Marko Lukic shot 33% from three last season. You do not want him open. He's considered to be a sharp shooter, wants to get that percentage up, obviously, but he's a guy they want to find in transition to be able to get three points on the board. Another deep three that's in the corner. Nothing but 44 to get the rebound this time. Manyang. And Little Rock and Prairie View tied up at 16 here in the opening game of the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Glad you joined us on ESPN3. On this Thanksgiving Eve, and another good defensive play. Panthers did not get the roll, but we have a foul, I think, away from the ball. Somebody went down pretty hard on the deck underneath the hoop there, Jeff. Looks like Linnell Henry taking a spill there. I got a nudge from behind. But an excellent, uh, an excellent steal here. We're seeing exactly what uh, wow. Prairie View A&M can do defensively. I, I would have loved to have seen a better shot there on the on, in transition, but bailed out by the foul underneath. That wasn't a block out. That was a block. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you got to give the Panthers credit. Another good opportunity. And look at the way they're moving the ball. Well. That would have been better off with the shot going up, but still the right idea. Another long three, and the guy can shoot it. That's Lukic. He's feeling it a little bit. Two threes, and he's keeping his team's offense afloat. It's either a three-pointer or a turnover the last few minutes for Little Rock, but those are big shots. Good ball movement again at the other end by the Panthers. Going to have a second try here, and it counts. And it makes it a one-point game again with 8.23 to go in the first half. And you can see the excitement on both of these teams. I think they're pretty happy to be out here playing basketball. Absolutely. Frenetic pace so far, Don, and I don't expect it to slow down at all. <laughs> it's going to stay that way. That one's knocked down by Bogan Joel. Something to that effect. A timeout. I think everybody needs a little breath. It's under eight minutes at 7.55. And a 21-18 game. Little Rock and Prairie View will be back to the Yum Center in the Ville after this. Feed your happiness. Everybody's been working hard. We want you to know your foe. Located in Little Rock, Arkansas, Sun Belt. Overall Sun Belt record, five NCAA tournament bursts. They really got things going. It started a few years ago, didn't it? Absolutely. Daryl Walker, we talked a lot about his long history in the game. He played for Eddie Sutton at Arkansas, was an all-conference and all-American guard. Took over a program that was 7-25 and and has turned them into tournament threats. They... He's the Sun Belt Coach of the Year last year. They picked to finish 11th, Don, and they ended up going 21-10 and 10 and being in great position. They won the regular season title in a tough league. And uh, he's really felt like this is a great opportunity to continue last season. He's got a lot of guys back from that group. And they just feel like they've got, as they keep saying, unfinished business yep. from a year ago. Yeah, and they really... You know, he really was so in love with Coach Sutton, you know, and it was hard for him when he passed. But what a great coach and what a great player he was. Absolutely. Got his coaching start in Toronto. Yeah. Here, a little trapping now, trying to change the pace. Had a steal, lost it, and we have a whistle. Going to be a travel. Well, a lot of things happened, end up just being a T.O. But both teams... Defense is one of the buzzwords. A little late for the Panthers to start, but they're both in high gear with defense right now. And you'd expect the defensive teams like this to really be able to junk things up and get a lot of turnovers and deflections. In the early stages of this season, they've had so much uncertainty. As you see the offensive foul there, coaches talking about how pretty much everyone from the highest levels down to the smaller programs all feel like they're in the same boat. They just haven't had a chance to do anything consistently. 
Top of the key, and you see the pushing and shoving. I think they were jockeying for position. What do you think? Easy, <laughs> yeah, pretty easy call there. So we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see a lot of turnovers. We're going to see a lot of offensive and defensive fouls. And it's going to be a sloppy start, but it has been frenetic for sure. And another handsy play by the Trojans, and they deflect it and pick up another steal. Straight away, a pretty good look that time, and Noel's been covered up pretty well. He got a lot of space early, but now it's a different situation. Good rebound inside after the miss. That was number three, Palermo going to get it. They are trying so hard <laughs> they are. to get uh, that paint clogged up. That's yep. where Little Rock feels like they can get a lot of buckets. Daryl Walker loves trying to pound it inside and get guys high percentage shots, but their offense runs through Marquise Noel, and it he's does. 0 for 5 so far. You can tell he's looking for a shot. He does have three assists, which tells you he's got that cerebral idea about how to play or cerebral approach to how to play. He can attract attention and find teammates, but for Little Rock's offense to truly be rolling, he's got to be hitting shots. And that was Goupet getting a rest for the Little Rock team. A little trap out of this zone again. That's good rotation to the right side. Makes it an easy two. That's Williams. He's one of the guys coming back that they had a lot of uh, big big hope for. Yeah, he's one of the guys they needed to fill a much bigger role, as we said earlier, losing their top six contributors. And he's already hit four jumpers today, four buckets today. And to be able to hit open shots like that, even in the mid-range, which is proven more and more so to be, unless it's the right person taking it, just not the greatest shot for offenses. But against a 1-3-1, one, one, that Little Rock's going to be throwing at him with 6-7, six, 6-10, six, six, a lot of length. You just got to take the open shots when you can get them. And knocking them down really makes their offense work a lot more. Almost knocked away and nice hustle play as Noel goes to get it. A little bit shot on that effort. Came up short, but look who gets it back. And almost got a circuit shot to go in. He hasn't had a lot of success, but you always know he's on the floor. He's into everything. There's a guy, Marquise Noel. He draws almost, drew almost five fouls for 40 minutes last year. First in the Sun Belt and free throw percentage, three point field goal percentage, and threes made. Third in assists, fourth in scoring. Just 5 7, but he has. <laughs> he has your attention at all times as we see Byron Smith out there wiping up the floor. But Marquise Noel, Don, I mean, this is one of those guys you can just see him on a Thursday afternoon in March. Yeah. Giving absolutely. some Power 5 team absolute headaches, burying threes from all over the park. I yeah. mean, the guy is just uh, an electric talent, and Daryl Walker basically says green light you've got the keys go do your thing yeah if you can find his points from the free throw line that'll help a lot and getting a kid from new york like him was a real key in the rebuilding of this the last couple of years too absolutely they wanted talent they, they said root man young as well felt like they were getting pieces they needed pieces to fill the whole puzzle and this really rapid turnaround that they've had has been helped by having such talented kids obviously I've been impressed by both teams' defense. They're getting after it for a season opener. Good hustle again, getting the loose ball. Defense has dominated this game. Little Rock has led from the beginning. It's been tied a couple of times. But a good opener here at the KFC Yum Center on ESPN3. Little pull-up jumper and got it to go. Fate Williams cooking a little bit here in the first half. He's a Texas product, too. Oh, what a nice feed inside. Say, well, Noel, I can't score right now, but I'll get me a nice little dime right there. How about that? Four assists for him already here in the first half. Great court vision there to shovel that pass in for an easy layup. This three gets nothing but glass. 
and hustling for the rebound, but I think it was bounced on the inline. Going to have another substitution. Well, you know, when you play defense like these teams do, you're going to see a lot of folks on the floor, that's for sure. There are bodies everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. They're talking a lot about hustle in this uh, in the pregame conversations I had with the coaches. Daryl Walker saying that they're going to work harder than you know what. And uh, these guys are going to keep at it at both ends of the floor and see if they can harass enough teammates into a, or enough opponents into a bunch of wins. Had a good look there, didn't go, but guess who got the loose ball, who started the pass and got another pass here, but what a great block inside. It'll go out of bounds to Little Rock. First the pass was great, and the defense was even better. <laughs> good recovery there from Prairie View. Pretty physical. They're allowing them to play a little they are. bit. I think if I this, like it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was going to say, I think if they were calling it tighter, that Root Manyang might be at the free throw line right now, but that's true. Marquise Noel keeps making plays for Little Rock. There's another loose ball picked up on the steal, and they're going to call a double dribble here. I'm not so sure that is agreement to that gentleman. <laughs> Oh, it's great to be back around basketball, i got to tell you. Everyone is just so excited. <laughs> you can even see with the way the teams are playing. Right. We've already got 20 turnovers between the two teams, and everyone seems to be moving at a extra high pace here. And as a result, it's kind of had this jittery start. But... 25-22 our score. We got a good one going on in the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. We'll be back to the Ville right after this. Feed your happy. Time to know the foe back here at the KFC Yum Center. I'll let you take this one, partner, as we get a little uh, thumbnail about Prairie View A&M. Prairie View A&M, Texas program, won the SWAC regular season last year, played in the first four in 2019. And Byron Smith, how about this? They've had five winning seasons since 1979 and two of them over the last two seasons. So Byron Smith has done a great, great job. The former Houston player was an assistant under Clyde Drexler and Mark Turgeon, and this program under him you can see how hard they play for him every year they've gotten better and it is just really remarkable to watch a program I, growing up Don I was used to hearing Prairie View would it be with these gaudy records you yeah know, three right. and 25 things right. like that but they are roaring here and so clearly excited to be playing they are all over the floor and causing Little Rock who is a very very good team yep some trouble in the first half and you saw the passion on his face in the huddle neither one of these guys are cool hand loop that's for sure they like <laughs> to get after it but that's when you've played and you've been a part of it it's just like what we do we're excited to be working today to come in and see basketball the crew is as well and we're glad you're watching on espn3 a lot coming up on thanksgiving eve and throughout the week after that and we'll have a lot to tell you Three-point game going here. The ability for Little Rock to switch between man and zone with their length. Perimeter jumper, and it works. That's one one of the things that's allowed Little Rock to kind of not play zone as much because Prairie View has been able to hit some perimeter shots. This is a team last season only shot 30% from three. And really had to make up for it by drawing fouls and getting on the offensive glass, creating transition layups. But they're hitting shots in the first half, and it's made their offense that much better. And speaking of offense, that's going to be an offensive foul because if you remember, Jeff, early in the game, a lot of things going on in the paint, and now the Panthers said, we're not going to take any of this. They've really changed the game inside. Little Rock trying to get it inside to their... Best post scorer and Nikola Maric 
10 turnovers and really didn't have any in the first segment of this first half, so it's really been compacted the last 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, and a nice dribble drive through there. Well, they talked about the fact that Williams from Dickinson, Texas, is going to be a real contributor. There's a good example right there. They, <laughs> they say, Byron Smith says, look, He's not a great ball handler to be a point guard. He has a big shot there from Marquise Noel. He got one. But Fate Williams, they say, this is Byron Smith. He says he's not a good enough handler to be a point guard. He doesn't shoot it well enough to be a two guard. But this dude is just a player. And he was a former walk-on. And we're seeing here in the first half, six of eight from the field. He's already got 12 points. He's just making things happen for Prairie, to, Prairie View. He does have five turnovers, Don, so he wants to cut back on that part of it, but he is scoring for them in droves. Oh, right idea, but the pass a little bit errant. Had the space underneath. And there you can see, Coach, that passion. You love it over there. And both of these guys are like that. And we talked about it, Jeff. I thought it was really neat that we're starting this tournament here the way Houston uh, tip-off classic with a game like this, with teams from two leagues that you know, if you lose in the regular season and you don't win the tournament, you may not go. It's uh, <laughs> so difficult in those leagues. You can have a huge season. You go, I don't know, 12 and 4 in your league, 13 and 3, get the top seed in your conference tournament, and you go home in an upset bid or something like that, and it can cancel out a whole season for or at least tamp the uh, <laughs> excitement that people have. and. You know what? That's part of the beauty of college basketball or the conference tournaments. In my opinion, almost an extension of, uh, it's not that ex not that crazy of an opinion, but an extension of the NCAA tournament. Everyone's got a shot to play into yep. it. But uh, Little Rock really with high hopes this season. Don and Prairie View picked third in the SWAC. Feels like they can compete for it once they have everybody eligible and healthy and ready to play. One out of two at the free throw line. That's a great point, and you know, the margin is so small in some situations. And you go through that whole season, and then you know, a lot of these leagues don't get two teams. There's a good double team, and on the pass opportunity, you hit the bottom side of the basket with a minute 26 to go. Well, other than the fact in that, what, early six-point cushion, it's been pretty close all the way since then for the half, hasn't it? Absolutely. It's been an entertaining first half. But you saw there, that's what Daryl Walker talks a lot about with his team defending in the half court, protect the paint. They want to help out as much as possible as Marquise Noel still really searching for something offensively. Well, he has been so excited. You mentioned he'd been talking about it on social media. Once again, a great ball reversal, and it ends up a three. I tell you, the Panthers have done that with great success here today. Jock Hughes splash down the Stephen F. Austin transfer. Shot 38% there. It's not a guy you want to leave open. But again, Prairie View now is 4 of 8 from 3, Don. A team that shot 30% from 3 last year. That is a market improvement and a team that if they're hitting shots like that, it really opens things up for them offensively because this is high turnover rate typically. Play such a frenetic pace that when you can find open looks, you gotta capitalize. Oh, I love the passion in the coaches and I think some of it's probably been uh, held in for about eight months. Absolutely. Nice play inside, but the shot won't count, but a foul. That's the first time the big guys touched it in a while, isn't it? They pretty much kept him out of the uh, offensive side of things. He really was so active on the offensive yep. glass early. Six points. Last year, get this, Don, 34 offensive rebound putbacks last year. So just pretty much won a game, if not more. Super active on the glass. But Prairie View has done a good job. You can tell any time the ball is near them, they basically flood him with bodies and hope to draw foul or foul him probably is their best bet at that rate. And they got the lead now with 32 seconds to go. 
Going to try to wind it down for the final shot here in the half. Deep in the corner, pull up jumper, got it! Once again, Hughes knocks this one down, and it's 32-29. Seems like every few minutes somebody new takes over <laughs> for Prairie right. View A&M. Jawan Daniels had a good start. Let's watch this guy here at the end. Get it down, want to get it back out. Got to let the shot go, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. Give Prairie View a lot of credit. They fell behind early, but they lead it by three at the half. Stay tuned. More to come from the KFC Yucks. So keep sharing the love, little by little. Welcome back to the KFC Yum Center here in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes, we're playing college basketball here on ESPN at the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Speaking of Coach Houston, so many people know him. I'm glad to have him as a close friend and know what he has done for basketball in the city of Louisville. Our own Jody Demling had a chance to sit down with the coach that we're honoring with this tournament. Let's take a listen. I'm Jody Dimling, and I am honored to be here today with a very special guest, the namesake for the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Wade Houston, Wade, first of all, thanks for letting Louisville use your name, and thanks for joining us today. What an honor it is uh, for us to be playing this event, one of the legends of Louisville basketball. It's got to feel good to have a tournament named after you as well. It, it really is, and I'm excited to see it happen. Um, I want to see the season get started as, as quick as possible. But it's an honor to have my name on this tournament, so I just hope everything goes well. Wade, a very successful businessman, but before that, one of the legends of Louisville basketball and the Louisville basketball program, not just as a coach, but as a player, as a guy who broke down barriers uh, throughout this program. What's it feel like to still be involved and have the University of Louisville still honor you and, and, and recognize you after after all of these years? Well, it. The year, the years have gone by really, really quickly, it, and I, I can remember the first time I set foot on the campus, and uh, I was when I signed. I later found out that Eddie Whitehead and Sam Smith were going to sign to play at the University of Louisville, and that was in 1962. So Coach John Dromo and Coach Hickman started to recruit me in 1961, and I came on campus for a visit, and went out to Freedom Hall, and, and I had never been so blown away with the facility in my life. And at the time, I think Freedom Hall was one, was one of the largest indoor arenas in the, in the world, along with uh, Madison Square Garden and maybe the Cow Palace in San Francisco. But when I walked into that place and just imagined that I'd be playing basketball in such a huge and, and uh, noted arena, I, I got excited. And, then, and it went by fast. So playing here and then later on the coaching here was just kind of the – capped off everything that I had done as a player. And just had so many great experiences, so many great coaches, so many great supporters, and just loved the experience. Wade, you mentioned uh, Sam Smith and Eddie Whitehead. You guys were were the three first three African Americans to sign with Louisville basketball. You were the first uh, on on a scholarship at Louisville for Louisville to the program and and for what you guys did to help all so many African American kids who still benefit from that today. What does that make you feel like sixty years later? It feels great. It feels like you've been a part of something special. And I can remember, again, the first time I walked on campus, I, I was introduced to Lenny Lyles and Ernie Green and guy, football players who have been here since the mid-50s. And, uh, and, and you have to remember that segregation was the law of the land in most places. You know, where I, where I came from in East Tennessee in the 1940s and 50s when I grew up, that was the law, you know, so... So I had no idea what I what I was really getting into. I just knew I liked the place. I liked Coach Dromo and Coach Hickman, but but to be a part of of that and and to see it grow from just uh, playing as a freshman on the freshman team and then then playing in the NCAA tournament and and just to see what what it evolved into was just really good for me. All right, Wade Houston. Again, we appreciate it. Namesake of the tournament. You won a state championship as a coach with Mayo High School in 1975. What a great team that was with Daryl Griffith. To part of two NCAA championship teams as an assistant coach here at Louisville and also part of two other Final Four teams. One last quick comment. How did Vince Tyree and, and, and the Louisville folks get you to, to go with this name on, you, on this tournament thing for you? Was it just something that he said, hey, we're going to do this? And, and you were like, yeah, sure, let's do that. 
Well, you know, actually, we had put together a small group called Memory Lane, and we were working on doing something to honor Wes Sunsell when he passed away. So I called Vince just to get his ideas, his thoughts on what we were trying to do. And he said, that's great. He's, that's great. But I have something in mind that I'll, I'll let you know about in a, in a day or so. So in addition to uh, helping us to think about what we wanted to do with Wes, he called me back and said, before we do this, he said, I would like to offer something to you. Not offer. I'd just like to suggest that we uh, use your name on this tournament. I was kind of surprised. I said, you know, I mean, I'm just here. I'm just an old fan, an old player. So when he told me, I was surprised and then honored because I got so many phone calls from people from all over the country just saying congratulations. So I guess I guess it's, it's worthwhile just to be a part of this after I heard so many people congratulate me for being a part of it. So it's it's been fun. One of the legends of Louisville basketball program, Wade Houston, we appreciate it. Thanks for the interview, and thanks for letting us use your name on this tournament. Thanks to Jody and thanks to Wade Houston, a real special man, a good job by Jody today. We're at the KFC Yum Center. We're at the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic in Game 1, and we got a good one. Sharing the love, little by little. And welcome back. We got highlights. That means it's basketball. Jeff, take it away. Look at uh, Marco Lukic for Little Rock. Two threes keeping the Trojans' offense going. He likes that range, doesn't he? Big time shooter from Serbia. And then Prairie View junking it up defensively, getting a ton of steals, but they've had Fate Williams carrying them in the first half. Great first half. He's got a bunch of steals. He's got 12 points. And he's had a great first 20 minutes for Prairie View that has them in the lead against a Little Rock team that is considered one of the best in the uh, mid-major top 25. And you look at the statistics there, anything jump out at you? Yeah, look at the bottom, 24 combined turnovers. Should tell you just about everything you need to know about how this season is starting for everyone. We knew it would be like this, but it is still surprising to see it in numerical form there. Yeah, it is. That's the numbers from the first half. And we're sure that uh, the turnovers will improve. But it really looked good for the effort, I think, by both teams. They really did want to play and uh, should have a good second half here. Absolutely. 32-29. Second half is next. Please feed your happy. Well, you know, the college basketball season tips off, and it continues on the ACC Network and the ESPN app at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's the Battle of the Villes. We're talking about Evansville squaring off against Louisville. That's game two of the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic coming up next at 4 p.m. A couple of games today. Take Thanksgiving Day off, and then we're right back at it. Partner, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm glad to work with you. and. We'll know each other very well by the end of the week. Yeah. Can you believe we're watching college basketball right now, Don? It feels like that nine-month span was about 45 years. It's uh, just desperate to watch some form of college basketball. We got the NBA off okay. We've had soccer back. We had baseball off. I wouldn't say okay, but a little bit of a rocky ship. Yeah. And hopefully we can get this college basketball season running smoother than it <laughs> started off with. No doubt, but yet a lot of people have put a lot of hard work into this, and it's just a pleasure to be a part of it, and glad you joined us today on ESPN3. Looks like it's going to start man-to-man -man here in the second half defensively. Very view with the ball and the lead. That didn't get any of it, and a flat-footed rebound underneath for the Trojans. It's a big story in the first half. Prairie View was four of eight from three. Off pretty good shot selection. Oh, what a nice pass. Even a better move. That little head fake made it an easy two. Thought it was going to be another block shot. Good seal there from Marich. Underneath. Easy put in. He's had a good offensive game so far. And Guess who? <laughs> kudos to Root Manyang, by oh, the way. Oh, really oh, good oh, elbow oh, passer. They love oh, his high-low action. Smart player. They want to put somebody at the elbow and make things happen. And when you put a 6'10 guy with such long arms there, you can really pick out good options offensively. 
And you know, you you had some good notes. I looked at them, and it was very helpful. You know, it's it, I like to see this because pretty much everything became the pick and roll. I mean, kind of, everybody was kind of doing the same thing, and there are other things that work. And he's really dedicated to it too. Absolutely, Daryl Walker talked a lot about sharing the ball. They move. A lot of curls, cuts, everything through the elbow. We'll run a lot of corner action. Just a, a really fun offense to play in for the players and a fun one to coach if you're Daryl Walker. He has it on the wing and now backs it up a lick, looking for either a pass or a pick. Boy, you got to keep the ball above your head and just try to get rid of it. Why they say don't bring the ball down because it makes it a neutral game for a short guy like me. <laughs> Marquise Noel, he's your point guard. You want him to back up, take a look at the shot clock and realize he's got to go. I realize the seconds kind of bled away as Manyang was juggling it, but Noel's got to be the decision maker there. You're very right. So the Panthers now on the attack out of the swack. Nice little dish move. Oh, really moved the body around. Looked like they were going to get an easy one. But look at this hustle. The ball's on the floor. Skin's already on the hardwood. That means it's basketball time. And a one-point game going on, and you can see how hard both of these teams and how ready they are to get a chance to play somebody else. Well, they've got to figure out a way to play cleaner but yes we already knew that this was going to be like this both <laughs> coaches basically said look especially byron smith he was like look i don't know what we have we've got to figure out someone's going to emerge in louisville that we'll be able to start relying on he didn't know what his rotation would be you can tell that by the number of guys he's already been playing it's already up to 11 here 10 and little rock a little shaky offensively yeah. with the turnovers they need Marquise Noel to get going here. He does have four steals, four assists, but just one of eight. And they've got to figure out a way to run this thing a little bit smoother. They want to take the lead and keep it. Had some delay, and now we're back to play. And it goes back to Noel. And the little guy will run the show. See the movement. Oh, another deflection. Noel got it back, and it goes inside in that little jump hook. Marich really likes it with the left hand there. Marich just uh, 11 points per game two seasons ago. And such a good scorer there, and Prairie View still getting into the lane and scoring at will. For the start of this second half, much different from the first. Everything's pretty much under control, and both teams are hitting the basket. Well, we got a long way to go. Good offensive rebound after the missed tough shot. That one doesn't go, and another rebound pulled down. This time a good job by Henry. So each team trying to fight for the board. Purview by one and the ball. Well, guess who was in there to block it? It stays in play. Well, oh, that was nearly a travel there. Looked like a travel to me. Yeah. When he's still on the shot clock, that's a nice little dribble drive. Fate Williams. Boy, he has really looked good. They were, he really is one of the few players they highlighted. He's lived up to the snuff here today. He's exploring every angle he could explore on the glass, and another steal here. And takes it from one end to the other, and that makes it the largest lead in the game, I think, for either team at five at 38-33. Opening game of the Wade Houston tip-off classic. Louisville coming up later against Evansville at 4 p.m. Eastern. That'll be on the family of networks. Inside, knocked away, loose ball again. Another left-handed basket for Marchic. You're seeing the difference between the two teams and what they can do. You want Marich and and uh, Noel to be creating things for you offensively. They'd love to get Ben Coupet going, but they got to cut down on the turnovers, and Prairie View is making the most of those opportunities. Good look off the left wing, doesn't go. Out of bounds, Panthers basketball. 
38-35. Just under the 16 minute mark. Inside, reverse shot doesn't go and out of bounds. Out of bounds. And that'll take us to a timeout under the 16 minute mark. 38-35, our score. Purview with the lead. You're watching the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Help us for all of our students. Keep sharing the love, little by little. There's the Prairie View bench and the intensity of what it's been like in this first half between these programs. And the SWAT preseason poll, you see Prairie View at number three. Of course, that's always been a very competitive league, too, but to do what they're doing now, the Panthers have really, as you said, Jeff, have been a mainstay. And that's one of the things I think Coach works so hard for, to get in a position where you have that opportunity to play for it. There's the uh, Little Rock Sun Belt. They have the two divisions, East and West. Of course, there are a lot of former uh, teams. Western Kentucky used to be in the Sun Belt. So that's all what's going on for Little Rock. They do expect to have another great season. You know, we forgot to even mention with these teams winning last year, what a big letdown. I Not know. to get to play in the tournament. Yeah, you that's... think they're ready? Because, <sighs> you know, they don't get m numerous opportunities. Yeah, this is, this is such a, a leftover storyline from last year. Yeah. There's so many teams that felt like they had a great chance. And it really is so hard in college basketball you capture lightning in a bottle some some programs sustain it but it, it, it was everything that prairie view had worked up toward everything that little rock was working up toward obviously little rock has a lot more back right. this season but both of those teams felt like they were coming into the postseason with spunky rosters that could cause problems and to miss out on it they're still talking about that missed opportunity yeah and I think that's what makes it so special. Had to shoot that one because the shot clock was running down. It's been such a change in Prairie View's offense in the first half. Yeah, they really. shot 30% from three last year. We're four of eight in the first half, but they're kind of chasing offensively to start the second half. But you can see, look at this pressure. Yeah, the how much they're court. causing trouble and making Little Little Rock work. Boy, that was a good example. Oh, what a nice pass. And that's the other thing. If you're facing the zone, if you're a big guy, get underneath there. you got to be alert. What a great pass, too. Absolutely. Got to be patient mm -hmm. underneath. Draws a lot of fouls, Root Mon Young, but he's also a good passer. Another steal and a layup. Tried to draw the foul, but there's the follow-up off the back of the iron. Stand clear yeah. of the closing doors, please, really? Don. <laughs> Root Manya coming in with a thunder behind Marquise Noel. Oh, batting down the hatches. Little Rock looking a little bit more confident out in transition than they did in the first half. This has been an entertaining game for everyone. And boy, the shooting still at a red hot pace as Daniels able to get this one down. How about Juwan Daniels having himself a ball game today? Oh, five of six shooting. How about that nifty move? You know, if you didn't know this was the SWAC and the Sun Belt, these guys are really playing well. What a great game to start the tournament. Absolutely. Back and forth. It's all we could have asked for. It felt like Christmas Day. <laughs> you wake up, and then you get to watch a, a close game like this. Yep, good defensive play. I wouldn't. Not too many times you can take it inside against Little Rock. And, you know, the thing for both teams, too, Jeff, is they're having and using their benches very well. It's so funny because Little Rock wants to get high percentage shots, but they're just 7 of 12 on, on layups. And Prairie View has flipped it on its head to get into the paint a little bit better than they expected to be able to. But yeah, Rootman Young in particular with that length can just alter and bother shots. You don't have to look always at the stat line he right. technically only has one block and one steal but when you've got someone who can fill space and make little guys think second 
thoughts about getting inside and trying layups really changes your defensive complexion. And that's what Root Manyang does for Little Rock. It makes your opponent think about it, doesn't it? Absolutely. And speaking of Manyang, he's going to get a break going to the bench for the Trojans. Can't get too many passes like that inbounds, but the Trojans did. This little jump hook doesn't go, and Walker, or Williams rather, goes in to get the rebound. One-point lead for Little Rock. It's been pretty close, pretty much a five-point game either way. In the opening round of the Wade Houston tip-off classic, Louisville and Evansville coming up at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Good pass. Oh, there you go. Good feed and good reversal. Good cut there from Linnell Henry as Fate Williams creating off the bounce. Linnell Henry is one of those guys that Byron Smith talked about. They don't really consider him to have a defined position. But he can move off the ball, and he showed there he's also pretty agile finishing, and so is this guy. Oh, boy, that was a nice move. I think he was anticipating maybe a foul. He came up a little bit short, but still a one-point game as we're at 12.43 to go in this one between Prairie View and Little Rock at the Wade Houston tip-off classic. Louisville and Evansville coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern in game two of this tournament. Little pull-up jumper, nope. Missed time the rebound, and that gives the opportunity for Noel to go and get it. Tough shot and draws a foul. Pull to the free throw line at the next chance. This is uh, Ben Coupet, who has not really had a chance to get going today. He was coming into the season, looked like probably their third or fourth scorer Good player, averaged 11 points, five boards last year, thought, shot 37% from three. UNLV transfer from Chicago, but he's really good spot-up shooter and transition as a cutter. Just one of five today, but that's exactly what Daryl Walker wants from his guys, is get to the free throw line and do your damage there. Your offense so much more efficient when you get to the free throw line and hit your free throws. And this young man, as you mentioned, from Chi-Town, and he nails the free throw, and he'll go to the pitch. There's a substitution, 43-42, 12-21 to grow in the second half. Along with Jeff Greer, I'm Don Russell, and our this crew nice. doing a great job. There's a nice feed. Wanted to get the three-point play, but did get the two, and a terrific job that time again by Henry. Jeremiah Gambrell with the... Headlight vision underneath yep. the basket. Nice, nice pass. Prairie View doing a good job of finding the gaps in that zone defense. And there's going to be a rebound foul. There's been a lot of jousting going on, and we'll check on that when we come back. 43. Two-point game. More to come from the bill. The fried egg. How about now? The new prime rib and fried egg biscuit at Hardee's. Feed your happy. Let's take a look at things that you need to take care of. That COVID protocol, I think that's become probably pretty popular when you're Googling things. And it is a lot of things you have to deal with as you go through them there, Jeff. And believe me, the university and U of L and everybody works so hard just to make it feasible. It's not, as Coach Max said, it's not a true bubble, but it's about as close as you can get. I thought it was really neat that each team got their own floor, and they also not only set up basketball uh, practice areas at the Yum Center, but they set one up in the ballroom. <laughs> I think they did everything possible to make it as safe as possible. We were all holding our breath to make sure we could get these games off. We started the week with all these postponements and changes wow. and everything. It's going to be like that for a while, but as long as everyone stays smart, we keep our distance. You see them keeping their distance there. Hopefully we'll be able to get this thing going without a hitch. Just in this city alone, we saw over the summer, Louisville City, the USL club, running their games with crowds. Yeah. We've seen Louisville football do it. 
just going into this holiday season, hoping everyone can stay happy and healthy. And bounce pass. Those good hands by the Panthers create another steal. And a little runner, and that's like he might be stepped on the paint. Speaking of that, he did a great job along with Clay Abels on the Louisville City. I'm sure that was a lot of fun and a nice run. Absolutely. I appreciate it. It was a fun soccer season. Happy to have basketball, though, and see that hardwood again. And we're at it here at the KFC Yum Center on ESPN3. Good win between Prairie View and Little Rock. Both teams having a little bit of trouble scoring now. Finally, a foul underneath the hoop, but a good rebound that time. That was number 32, Cam Mack. He's a big time player two years ago for uh, Little Rock, Chris Bankston. And right. he's a 6'8 junior. Big time offensive rebounder. Get this, Don. 81% wow. from the field two two seasons ago with a nice 69 dunks <laughs> in his uh, repertoire. Want to be able to get him back. He missed most of all of last season with a back injury. Only played in a couple of games, but they need him to be a key bench contributor and a big time offensive rebounder. Thanks for picking me up. Of course, that was Bankston and not Mac. 32 on the other team. It's confusing. We're still getting first we're all turn, rusty. First turnover for the year. We're all rusty. That's all right. I'm not, I'm not afraid at all to admit it. <laughs> That's what good teammates are for. There you go. And we got a good one going on as we've talked in the KFC Yum Center in the opener of the Wade Houston Tip Off Classic. A one point game. Two teams that had a lot of success but didn't get to taste the NCAA tournament because of what happened. He pulled him by the back of the pants, almost pulled him down. Root Manyang, <laughs> like a tree inside, Jeez, okay. corrals the rebound, doesn't care who's pulling on him. <laughs> Look at this. Got his britches. Yeah. <laughs> Still skips it in <laughs> from, uh, from Nashville Root. I wasn't the only one that noticed that he did. <laughs> I like this guy, though. Isn't he a troop, trooper in there? Just a big-time offensive mm. rebounder. You can see why. The guy, the accolades last season. Right. All Sun Belt first team. Yeah. Defensive player of the year, newcomer of the year. Preseason this year, Sun Belt player of the year. He's putting in a shift today, 14 points, five rebounds, a block, a steal, two assists. Doing a little bit of everything. And they tried to take his drawers <laughs> on top of it all. I just thought that was a nice little sidebar. Open three. A little bit too strong. Rebound nearly taken away and is. And the follow-up doesn't go. But I tell you, Prairie View has been really scrappy on the glass since early in the game. Despite maybe the size disadvantage at time, they go after it. Absolutely. And this is... Byron Smith's team to a T. He said the other day, we won't be the biggest team. It's always going to be our Achilles heel, but he loves his team because of the effort. They all talk about effort, energy, the ability to attack the offensive glass. Doesn't matter if you've got a 6'10 dude down there. They're going to come at you and scratch and claw. And then you can draw fouls around the rim. Gives you a great way to keep at it in this one. And we see Prairie View A&M first trip to the line here in the second half. Yep. Darrell Roberts, those are the particulars on the junior guard. As it goes to the line. And rolls it around and drops it in. It's a Juco guard from Kilgore Community College. Just another one of this long list of guys who are getting a chance to play in this game for Prairie View. They are always going to play with a deep bench. That's what allows them to play with the pace and energy that they play with. So now Little Rock's lead is one after the freebies go. 47-46. And you know, Prairie View's doing a good job of running those troops in and out too to keep this pressure on. And now we see it full court once again. They've really spent some time working on this press, you can tell. Absolutely. That's what they want to do. They want to get in passing lanes. 
use their defense to create some offense. An errant pass knocked away. It'll stay with Little Rock with 12 to shoot in a one point lead for the Trojans. Don, the Byron Smith was saying, look, because this wasn't a traditional offseason, we haven't had a chance to work as much on our defensive stuff, deflections, jumping in passing lanes, but they seem like they're in midseason cool. form regardless. I tell you what, they just did a good job there. Looked like it was going to break down for an easy basket, but boy, they recovered nicely. So Little Rock with a one-point lead, but Prairie View, the Panthers trying to change that now with 9.25 remaining. And the Wade Houston tip-off classic, Louisville and Evansville coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern. There is a turnover, one of the few that Prairie View's had in a while, but they stay right after that defense. Now a good double team. Could be some numbers now. And open, that's a two, and it goes. Well, it might be the worst shot in basketball, <laughs> stepping right inside the three-point line, but if someone's going to take it, it's going to be Marco Lukic and... He's had a nice game today. He's hit three shots for them, nine points to help that backcourt scoring. Marquise Noel, normally such an electric score for them, struggling from the field today. Three-point lead for Little Rock. Preview with the ball in the purple. Good dribble drive there. There's another block. Guess who? The hands go up and the body's in front of you more often than not. 44 and the white's going to stick it right back in your face. Marquise Noel still looking for a shot, Don. One of 11 now from the field. One of six Time from out. three. And that's just not like him. Yep. Got a timeout oh, on the floor. 49-46 Little Rock. Glad you're watching the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Keep sharing the love, little by little. Got a good one going on here in the KFC Yum Center along with Jeff Greer. I'm Don Russell, Jeremy No and the crew doing a terrific job. The first of two today and many more here in the Wade Houston tip-off classic. And we couldn't ask for a better one here, Jeff, because both teams uh, certainly aren't playing. Maybe turnovers early, but they're really getting after it. This has been an outstanding game. A lot of pace, a lot of scrappy activity. Prairie yep. View hasn't hit a field goal in four minutes. Wow. But they've forced turnovers from Little Rock on 30% of their possessions, and they're able to turn that into offense. But, yeah, really fun game to start this whole event off with. Don't forget about, University of Evansville and Louisville, 4 p.m. Eastern on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And everybody will take a day to maybe have a little turkey, be thankful, and we're just glad you're with us today and glad that so many people have had, did a lot of hard work to make this happen for all these young people. And we're glad to be a part of it. There's the zone again, shooting over the zone. Could have been a foul, too. It is a foul. Well, he got the field goal, and now he might get four. Marquis Noel <laughs> has just been looking for that spark, something to catch. And maybe that is the match there. Don with a three-pointer, four-point play opportunity. It's dangerous for Little Rock to get going. About the parties and a little more about the people. Finding little ways to show your appreciation. Come here, honey. So keep sharing the love, little by little. Well, the upcoming schedule for things going on here right in front of you, that's for Little Rock. When you look at that, Jeff, go from top to bottom, and uh, that shows what goes on through the week. And you see coverage on ESPN3 and ESPN+. Plus. Three of those games against top 90 teams in the preseason Ken Pomeroy ratings. All teams that have real serious postseason aspirations, Greensboro and Western Kentucky both, Winthrop as well, teams that think they can win their conference. Duquesne in a very tough a10, but a good team and Prairie View schedule just as difficult. Yep. Hey, I like that game at Grand Canyon. That's a fun game. Grand Canyon, coached by Bryce Drew, got a lot of talent there now, trying to get back to their winning ways. Another place known for a great fan atmosphere, great home court advantage. 
It'll be interesting to see how much not having fans or at least as many fans changes the complexion of all of these games. I know people keep talking about Duke 15, 20 point advantage added to each game it seems yeah. like when at their home court to not have fans is going to be a real challenge that will make it a whole different a situation whole different game but you talk about game changing talents marquise noel here don this is not good news if you're prairie view he's just two of 13 from the field today but getting four points on that four point play he's up to nine for the game Check this out. Six steals, four assists, four rebounds, three offensive rebounds. That's how you stay involved even when your shot's not falling. Yeah, because you know so many players, they get frustrated Absolutely. and they're pretty much done. There's another good rebound inside fighting for it. Was Ruth Manyang. Manyang having a great game. 14 and eight for the big fella. <laughs> Two blocks, a steal. He's just such a presence. You can't take your eyes off him. He's yeah. so long and lanky, so athletic, changes shots on one end, attacks the offensive glass on the other. Well, that was in a lot of traffic, and that's going to be a held ball. So on the possession arrow, it will go to Prairie View, A&M. Don, something I'm so impressed with today from Prairie View, their hands are so active, and they're doing it without really fouling a lot they've got uh, let's see they've had 15 fouls called on them in this one not a huge number but for a team that is reaching and scratching so much you would think it'd be a little bit higher they just get so many deflections and just so bothersome defensively yeah, both these teams have not given an inch in a great game really in terms of the competitiveness for the beginning there's a nice Dribble drive down on the baseline. That was number 10, Gambrell Jr. Another good defensive possession there from <laughs> the Prairie View. Yep. Correction, timeout. Oh, and a timeout. I thought it was a foul, Don. I did too at first, <laughs> but it's a timeout with seven minutes remaining. And Little Rock with the 53 to 48 advantage. You had thought the, the same thing you did, Jeff. And now there's still some discussion about it from the Prairie View bench. Friday, Friday's uh, games and slates we got here. We got Evansville and Prairie View. Seton Hall and Louisville. That's coming up on Friday. A lot to do after stuffing with turkey tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully you shake everything out <laughs> on Thursday night because you got to get up and get ready for Absolutely. Friday. Absolutely. Seton Hall coming in off of a quarantine, trying to get back into shape. Team that has NCAA tournament expectations again. They're always so solid under Kevin Willard. Yep, he's done a great job there, Kevin has. Got to know him really well when he was coaching here. and Just a really good guy. Actually, I knew him even before that and his dad. But he's got that program going too. You know, people thought, I remember before he always said, to many people he thought it could be a great job absolutely and, Seton Hall's got a lot yeah. of history good talent base in that area he's a good recruiter and he's getting support now too what it looks like I absolutely. think that's really crucial yeah Miles Powell just moving on an excellent excellent player for Seton Hall yes he was something little alley-oop knocked away oh one of the players went down pretty hard but he got up okay popped up quickly that's Daniels he hit pretty hard, though, on the floor. Kind of a shaky last couple of possessions for both teams, trying to throw lobs and passing to places where people aren't. If I'm Little Rock, I want to slow this thing down a little bit. I know it hasn't been the easiest offensive game of 16 turnovers, but you know you can get on the offensive glass. You know you can draw fouls. I want to get my offense set up and going and slow down you know i'm just a little guy but i love it you see players like this young man at the line right now they love to stick needles in bigger guys said, <laughs> you think i can't do it you just watch me you can tell he's got that gumption and look does the little spin around himself yep. when he's he is a new york guy there's no doubt about it and to his credit as you said key point 
Even though he's beginning to score now, he hasn't hit from the field, but he still contributed in a big time way. Absolutely, that's what that's what he does. He's similar to Root Manya, and you can't look away from Marquise Noel. Looked like a walk to me. Me too. And now they're going to get the walk after the rebound. I don't know about that one. No, I don't know either. He, the big guy's got some hands. He picked up that ball like a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marquise Noel coming on here in the second half. He's even doing the broom work here. You know, I forgot to mention it earlier. I noticed the officials were doing it. Wow. We can't have the ball boys yeah. or girls. Wow. So now the officials... And guess who? And the players. <laughs> and the players. Marquise Noel, just 2 of 13 from the field, but he's done just about everything else, getting a free throw line, rebounding, stealing, passing, and now mopping up. He's doing everything for Little Rock today. And, you know, that really proves a point to his coach and his teammates, too. Here's a good look at the three, and it bounces off. Good rebound. And another possession after the offensive boards. Three ball right side. That one's in the net from Darrell Roberts. Big time ball movement there. And that's when you're so dangerous as a three-point shooting team off an offensive rebound. Your opponent has collapsed. And great patience there from Prairie View to keep working and find the open man. Little jump hook. Partially blocked. Got it back again. And... Going to have a foul. I tell you, the Trojans have been getting in that offensive rebound space, haven't they? Marcy, especially. He is a beast inside. He is. Serbia, big fella, sorry, from Bosnia, Herzegovina. Maric working his tail off. Part of the world that produces a ton of big guys. But he's skilled. He's, he's not just a big body. He's got good hands. You mentioned it on the other end, really able to hold on to the ball. He can shoot a little bit. He hit yep. a couple of threes last year, but averaged 11 points as a starter two seasons ago and averaged eight and five last year. Nice game today, though, 14 and eight. Yeah, he's a steady Eddie, you can tell. And Absolutely. shoots the free throws. Of course, I'll say this, and every left-handed person will say, ah, you're crazy. Haven't seen too many left-handed basketball players that couldn't shoot. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Back to a six-point lead. Big possession here. Too strong. But a good fight again to keep the possession in a three ball. That's just like making a turnover or three there. That was a good second effort. And that takes it down to a three-point game with five minutes and change remaining. And you'll never guess who is at the center of it all. Fate Williams <laughs> making the effort on the offensive glass. The ball kind of fell to his area, but you still have to be able to snatch it and find an open teammate. And a big three. That's something I'm a little surprised by today. Prairie View, six of 17 from yeah. three. I know I keep harping on it. Last year struggled from three. Made up for it offensively by getting to the free throw line a lot. Today, just two of two from the free throw line, so they're making up for it by hitting some open threes. Three-point game under five minutes to go here in the opening game of the Wade Houston Tip-Off Classic. Glad you're watching on ESPN3. There's a steal. You could see that one coming. And a breakaway and a dunk. Good job by Bogajo. He saw that one all the way. Absolutely. A great steal and easy finish. That's where Little Rock can put this game away if they keep doing it. Easy baskets and empty turnover or empty possessions for Prairie View. There's a nice dribble drive. Good ball reversal. Three on the way. Boy, that three ball has been big for the Panthers. You'll never guess. Who is at the end of it? It's Darrell Roberts again. <laughs> Three threes for the 6 7 Texan. Splashdown and Prairie View staying in this game because of the three ball and their efforts on the offensive glass. Yeah, and there's a timeout with 4 10 now. Second chance points today, Don. 12 for Prairie View. Just listen to this breakdown here 20 points off turnovers. 12 second chance points off nine offensive rebounds. 
And that is how you make up for a turnover rate that is already up to 35 and a half percent. You've got seven or 22 turnovers today, but erasing missed shots by getting offensive rebounds and hitting threes. And Little Rock, you gotta give them credit. They're defending the 10 really well, but mm -hmm. the opponent's hitting threes. <laughs> washes away. It's like hitting home runs in baseball. Absolutely. It just kind of washes away everything else. We got a two-point game, folks. We'll be right back. A dash. Every flavor welcome. Two-point game with 4-10 remaining. And we were chatting during the break and looking at some numbers. And some of them have been unbelievable and career highs for a couple of players. Marquise Noel, six steals, surpassing the previous high of five. I haven't looked back at every single one of his games done, but I can't imagine he's had too many two of 14 right. shooting outings, but he does have a five of five clip from the free throw line, four boards, four assists. He stayed active. And then look at that. Nikola Maric, 15 points, eight mm -hmm. boards. And Root Manyang, 14 and 9. Combined, those three players have 11 offensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. Got some cramps going on. You can see trying to work it out over there to uh, Fate Williams. It's a big guy to be on the sidelines, yeah. too, for yeah, Prairie is. Of course, you got to keep in mind these guys haven't played anything but scrimmage games. In a real game, traveling, everything makes it completely different. Byron Smith of Prairie View said they'd been shut down sit between the conference tournament and mid-September. They had not been able to work out as a team. Wow. And uh, that's something that makes it really challenging for a team to get quickly into shape. He said a lot of their recruiting actually was word of mouth, just calling around. And that's, you know, that's, that's common, but typically by yeah. June you start getting your guys on campus and getting a chance to see what they're actually made of. And they're learning a lot about this team over the last two months and today especially. Prairie View looks for the chance to tie, and they do. That was a good movement, got it underneath. They've had some pretty easy baskets today too, by the way. But that's been good passing. Juwan Daniels doing some work. He's got 14 today. It's been a nice offensive addition for this team. Noel off the back of the iron. Good offensive rebound. And with 3.37, this one certainly up for grabs with a two-point game. And we're under the four-minute timeout as well from the KFC Yum Center. Oh, we just took that two-minute timeout. That's how fast this game's been going. <laughs> a lot of substitutions for sure. Gotta stay in my lane, I understand. <laughs> I think they instinctively all started jogging they, off. They were, we were I thinking, think they wanted a break. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's the official again over in the right. Working hard they're, they're to get make that sure way. that this is uh, always going to be a tough conditioning game. This whole experience the next two weeks is yep. going to be tough for all of these teams. The limited workouts they've been able to do. You always think, hey, I can do stuff at home. But there is nothing like being in basketball shape versus just being able to run a few miles and do some workouts. Yeah, that's that's true. The best shape I ever had as a kicker. Kickers don't get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I weighed 150 pounds then, so I couldn't gain weight if I wanted to. <laughs> this has been a real good one. And we've had a chance to do our homework and thought it would be. But you know, you just never know to wait, the anticipation. Good and bounce pass there. Don't get the shot to go, but a foul. I tell you what, we were talking about Marchi. He works his tail off to get in the right post position. I mean, he gets right there. And you, if you're defending him, there's not much you can do. You talk about a team that really was a, a good offensive team last year. A big reason for that high effective field goal percentage is their excellent out of timeouts and baseline out of bounds plays. And you can see there the space was created for Maric to get into the lane. He's a good free throw shooter too. So either way, they feel like they're getting a lot of bang for their buck by getting the ball in his hands. And he has had an excellent performance today. 
for Little Rock. You know, they had a big loss, Don, just before the season started. They had a key player, Kamani Lawrence transfer, and, or Kamani Johnson, sorry, Dakari Johnson's little brother. Really? He's the fourth uh, leading scorer on the team. He was a starter, Sunbelt Conference third team, transferred to Arkansas in October. And I think having a guy like Marich come in and play the way he's playing, he's been a player for them for a few years, but to show that he and Manyang can handle the load down low has been a nice find here for Daryl Walker, at least a nice assurance, I should say, right. that these guys can keep producing. Still a two-point game as we approach the three-minute mark. Three ball. This one doesn't go. That's been a familiar and good spot on the floor. And now Noel will just bring it up, and he's going to run the show with under... The three-minute mark, there's a little dribble drive. Can't get it. Didn't get the foul either. And a loose ball down on the floor. Story of the game for Marquise Noel. He does everything right. He gets the rebound. Yeah. He can initiate things in the other direction. Of course, you want the ball in his hands. Splits the defenders and does everything right, but just can't get the shot to fall. Yep. Little Rock in the... Bonus plus with 2.43 remaining. They hadn't been fouling a ton in this game, right. Don, but all of a sudden it seems like things are catching up to him a little bit. Marquise Noel hit 102 free throws last season. I mean, that guy <laughs> shoots free throws a lot. Watch the little spin. I like this now. He goes over top around the belly and got to get your routine they teach you that pretty young absolutely and he got the friendly bounce got the friendly bounce good really good offensive player yeah and he i know is. i keep saying it but no he is and shot. you know it happened but again jeff i think we made probably the best point a lot of scores they don't have success they don't add in any other way yeah. this guy's picked up his game in other categories absolutely. with a career high in steals. Those are possessions. Absolutely. 88% free throw shooter last year. He's got seven free throws today. Little breakdown there for Prairie View. They'll take it. Yep. And now it's a two-point game again with 2.26 to go. I've been impressed by the effort of both of these teams. Because, again, this is their first real look at any time of live basketball. Little runner. Big time shot there from Marquise Noel. Just his third field goal in 17 attempts. But if there's anyone on either team that you want taking that shot while struggling, it's Marquise Noel. He, he almost, almost gets a steal there. <laughs> what a weird game for him. Oh, yeah. But his, you know, I admire him, though. I mean, he keeps playing. He's game working is his tail so off. mental, and you could just get your dauber down and say, hey, this kid has picked it up everywhere else. And he'll find that shot, believe me. We'll get a chance to see it through the rest of the tournament. Under two minutes to go, a four-point lead for the Trojans. And we have a foul, I think, away from the basket prior to the shot. So it'll go out of bounds here. What's really fun watching both of these teams, and we're going to see this throughout the week. Greensboro plays like this, too. And Duquesne does a little bit as well. They're kind of scramble defenses. So you're going to see guys flying around. They're trying to get deflections, fill up passing lanes. And it just makes for a game like this that's just so energetic and fun to watch. There's a block but a foul. Pretty tough effort that time as Henry tried to take it against two of the big guys for the Trojans. But got bailed out a bit as he'll have a chance to go to the free throw line. It's a big couple minutes for Prairie View. You talked about all game, Don, that they lost five of their starters or six seniors, key guys, and they're, this is an opportunity here. It's a tight game. Final couple minutes. Who do you got? Who are your guys yeah. in these moments? Fate Williams dealing with some cramps here, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but he's back on the floor now. you got to see, is he your guy? Is Linnell Henry your guy? Who can you go to in crunch time to get you some points when you need them? Now it's a two-point game with a minute 49 after the free throw. 
And we have Briscoe check back into the lineup for Prairie View A&M. And under about a 145 time remaining here in regulation. Little Rock by two in the white. And the purple uniforms, Prairie View A&M. The Sun Belt and the SWAT going at it to begin the Wade Houston tip-off classic here in Louisville. Shot clock down to seven. Good block and a good steal out of that. Boy, talk about a defensive gem. And an opportunity at the other end, and it just rolls off. And going in and get the rebound is Markic. And now with a minute nine. Byron Smith has to be thinking, man, you got to use the glass yep. or you got to slow down. One or the other. It's a tough One shot. One minute, little floater from the baseline. Not much of an angle. I might have backed out there, but it is tough when you're playing scramble defenses to slow down. Great feed and a oh. nice basket. Oh, he may not oh, shoot well from the field, but this guy has been worth the price of admission. Is Noel again the fine guard, the junior. Don't want to foul here underneath, and he threw it away with 35 seconds to go. A quick foul, and now with 34 oh, and 5, 10 seconds remaining, we have a four-point lead for the Trojans here in the opening game of the Wade Houston tip-off classic. This is exactly what makes good teams have successful seasons completing your possessions. That's something that Daryl Walker talked a lot about. Defensive rebounding, finishing possessions defensively, the whole 30-second shot clock, and then offensively, you just saw it. You get the ball in the hands of your playmaker with Marquise Noel. What a game he's had. Six steals, five assists, five rebounds, 16, 15 points, sorry, and just making it work for Manyang, and then you get your experienced Jovan Stulich, he's a sophomore, but he started 29 games last year. Belgrade native can shoot it. A guy like this, you want on the free throw line. So they are finishing strong here, Don, after a really tough scratch and claw game against Prairie View. Yep, and got to give both teams credit because to play against somebody else and really, other than the first couple of minutes in the game, that both teams have really played very well. Very entertaining game, a six-point lead now. Probably gonna have to look for some threes here. Here's one on the way, rolls off, and that's a big rebound. And if you're the Panthers now, you either let it run it out or you're gonna foul. And I think they're gonna elect to foul here with 15 and 4 oh, ten seconds remaining. Root Manyang last season, 16 double-doubles which I believe led the country and the dude comes back today and starts his season with another one 16 points 10 boards and a really good couple of defensive possessions in the final minute and a half or so for Little Rock is going to help them at this point it looks like going to be a win for them and a really strong start defensively to this tournament Made them both 71 63. And now, if you're the Trojans, you just don't want to foul. This three ball goes. Get it in quickly. Five seconds remaining. And now, the star of the show, despite his poor shooting, is going to run it out. And Little Rock opens up the tournament with a 71 66 win over Purview Philly. 71-66 is our final score.